Okay, welcome back. Uh, you're watching the Midday View here, and we're going to be talking about uh, Mozambique and uh, South Africa and Brazil. What do these emerging countries, for example, have in common? Heroin, drug trafficking is already a huge problem in Mozambique, but now with the conflict in northern Cabo Delgado province, the country is unable to prevent international crime syndicates operating across the coastline. For example, one academic paper describes how the volume of Afghan narcotics traveling by small boats from Pakistan to Mozambique is so large that heroin constitutes the country's second biggest export, valued at an annual six to eight hundred million U.S. dollars. The same paper also notes how around a hundred million dollars of that total goes into paying bribes to members of Mozambique's ruling Frelimo party who protect and regulate the trade. Well, for more on this discussion, I'm joined by a panel of experts in the studio with me in Johannesburg is Mwelezi from the South African Institute of International Affairs. We've got Dr. Joseph Hanlon, who's a journalist and is a writer of that uh, paper I was referring to. And we've got David Matsinya as well, he's a researcher from Amnesty International Southern Africa. Let me begin here. Joe, good afternoon with you in London first. Uh, you wrote about three years ago for the London School of Economics a very detailed paper of this trade and where you argued a particular point. But first question, is Mozambique today still a significant heroin transit route? Yes, it is. And I actually wrote my first paper 20 years ago um, for the magazine Metacal in Mozambique. And it has always been a trade center because it is part of a transit route, the Heroin comes, and now methamphetamine, comes by Dow from the Macron coast down to the north of Mozambique. It's then transferred by road to Johannesburg. And from Johannesburg, the meths stay in South Africa, and the heroin is shipped to Europe. What's the so size? What's point. the size? What's the size of this drug trade? How big is this in terms of volume and economic benefits? Well, we're talking about tons and tons of drugs and m value of millions of dollars. And the trade has shifted somewhat because of the war in the north, um, but it is increasing and it's increasing very rapidly, in part because of the, the crystal meths going into South Africa. Okay, now the war in northern Mozambique, let me bring you in there, Mwele Timbik. South Africa has got soldiers on the ground today as we speak as part of the SADC standby force and uh, that had been deployed there. And that war, according to Joe, is making things worse in terms of this trade. But South African troops are on the ground there fighting the insurgents. Just the other day, some of the bases, I saw a report coming out of Mozambique that they found about 300 kgs of heroin in one of the former bases of the insurgents. South Africa is there. I mean, South Africa is involved. Well, this to me is, uh, is a big surprise because, uh, as Joe Hanlon has pointed out, he has been writing for some time, pointing out that the ruling party in, uh, in Mozambique is involved in the, in the drug trade, in, the, in facilitating, let me say, the, the importation of drugs into southern Africa and then its transshipment into South Africa. Now we find the South African government going to protect the same regime that is destroying our young people in South Africa. On what basis yeah, because, is it doing this? Because, yeah, we're going to explore that a little bit more. Uh, D David, let me bring you in uh, as a researcher as well, linked to Amnesty International. I saw an article you wrote recently where you were writing a few months ago about the legacy of Frelimo and Samora Michelle and saying that uh, it, it's no longer relevant and Frelimo has walked away from that. When you hear reports about this ongoing uh, uh, heroin drug trade and how it's seemingly facilitated by Frelimo leaders uh, as a human rights activist, what goes through your mind? Yes, uh, what Joy has been writing for the past 20 years on this subject is actually consistent with what we have observed in terms of the Mozambican government authorities uh, relative to their responsibility to fulfill uh, and um, protect human rights since the death of Samora. 
that responsibility has been abdicated. And what we have seen is, is sovereignty for sale. Sovereignty is for sale, which means uh, the Mozambican territory is being sold along, along with its resources to facilitate organized crime. You have the land expropriated, which benefits only the political elite. You have resources as well expropriated for, to benefit the political elite. Same thing with the Mozambican territory, to benefit the Mozambican uh, political elite. So this drug you know, trafficking facilitated by the Mozambican you know, uh, political elite is really part and parcel of this sovereignty that has been for sale since the death of Samora Machel. Now, Joe, you've written about it for two decades. Where's the evidence? Uh, I mean, who in Frelimo, who is this political elite that's seemingly uh, uh, colluding or supporting or aiding uh, these uh, drug lords in terms of the heroin drug trade? Well, no one is clearly identified, but what is interesting is that the one person who was identified by the United States, the drug kingpin, MBS, was that he has had very close relations with Joachim Chisano and then with Armando Gabuza. So, I mean, this goes up to the very top level. And is MBS, clearly it's uh, the local... Bashir, is MBS Bashir Suleiman? Yes. And the um, Chisano went to his wedding... Gabusa went to the opening of his great shopping center in, in Maputo. I mean, these this is relations that go to the very top. And if the president is involved with the, with the drugs kingpin, then there are obviously people below that who are also a part of the network. And it will be at provincial level. It will be in the police. It will be in the customs. I mean, this money gets shared around. But a big chunk of it surely goes to a couple of big people and to the party. Frelimo will be getting a chunk of the money from this for their election campaigns and so on. Now, now, Mulezi, Frelimo is an ally of ANC. Uh, during the anti apartheid struggle, ANC had a presence in Mozambique, right up to the time of the Nkomati Accord in 1984 that President Samora Michel signed with the then uh, Prime Minister P.W. Botha to get rid of ANC uh, presence in that country. These are allies and uh, they're supporting one another. And you are questioning why today the government of South Africa would be there. And when you listen to the fact that some of the top leaders of Frelimo are linked to a man like Bashir Suleiman, who's alleged and has been listed by the Americans as somebody who's involved in this drug trade. What goes through your mind? It is absolutely shocking uh, what has happened to liberation movements in Southern Africa. Uh, liberation movements in Southern Africa set out with a very noble ambition to liberate the countries from apartheid, from Portuguese colonialism, and the large numbers of people supported them to achieve this. But what has happened since they came into power? They have turned against these objectives and they have become cliques who look only after themselves. And you find this in Zimbabwe, you find this in Mozambique, in Angola, in South Africa. These cliques are now looking after themselves and are stealing money literally from the taxpayers. Is this an example of what some people might call a criminalization of political power in Southern Africa? I, I think that is the right word. We are seeing the criminalization of political power where the former liberation movements facilitate crime and benefit from crime. As Johanlon says, that Frelimo is a beneficiary from the drug trade. Now, now, what about international community, uh, 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 Joe? If I can bring you in here, I'm asking this because in the in the in the world of of liberation movement and the struggle for against Portuguese colonialism and against apartheid, you had an anti-apartheid movement as an example where you had solidarity. Surely, the international community can stand by watching heroin drug in volumes that you've described uh, over the last 20 years making its way via the the coast of Mozambique, via Johannesburg to Europe. 
But yet the international community has done exactly that. They've known for 20 years that this is going on and they do nothing. And there's a reason for that. And that was the introduction of neoliberal economic policies 20 years ago in which the international community wants to create oligarchs in these countries that will work with foreign mining companies, foreign investors, and they want to build up these powerful people who support capitalism and don't support their own people. This is in the interests of the international community. So we have, and this happened with the, um, the secret debt in Mozambique. This was organized by one of the biggest banks in the world, Credit Suisse. So we have the Swiss involved, we have all these people involved who are corrupting Mozambicans. Now, of course, you know, it's greedy Mozambicans who are taking the bribes, it's greedy oligarchs who are taking money that should be going to the poor, but they're being encouraged, promoted by an international community because these oligarchs are then allied to big corporations and so on in the West. And so they will put up with the heroin trade because that creates these powerful people that they can deal with. And they will say to these powerful people, we are not exposing you for the heroin trade, so we expect quid pro quo from you. Okay, we'll talk shortly about the impact of this on the, on the people, on the countries, uh, local communities, especially with this war going on in northern Mo Mozambique, currently in Cabo Delgado. We'll take a, a break uh, shortly and we'll continue. I've got Mueli Zimbek with me in the studio. Joe Hanlon, uh, connected from London, and David Matsinia is here in Johannesburg. He's a Mozambican human rights activist. Stay with us.